my friend. <laughs> I could hear my voice getting really loud at the beginning there, and I don't want to turn anybody off right away. <laughs> I need to calm down. But I can't, because life. <laughs> life for me right now is like, I truly have been doing this so much. Anxiety, stress, family, work. <sighs> but these videos are an escape for me and you are such a release. You are such fram to me, truly. So I thank you and this flower is for you. If any of you remember, I showed you all a flower the other day. That one is white, this one is pink. Teddy, come here, say hi to my fram. He's taking a whiz. <laughs> Teddy. That's a long whiz, geez Louise. Daddy! <laughs> Dissed. Oh well. My mom! Hi! How are you? Hi! I love you! I love you too! <laughs> Alright, let's get to it, okay? I love you. Starting off today by talking about Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, and the music video that everybody was talking about yesterday, you need to calm down. One of my favorite things from that music video is, well, everything. There were so many jiffable moments, but I love that Taylor paid the queens that took part in it. If you didn't see the video, there were several RuPaul's Drag Race alums in the video, in addition to Ru herself, and Taylor made sure they all were compensated, the queens say, and paid well, because other artists, whom shall not be named again Katy Perry, got themselves into hot water by asking drag queens to appear in their music video for free. <laughs> Speaking of Katy Perry, Taylor, man, I love this new era. She is the promo queen now. Yesterday, after the music video premiered, she phoned in to Capital FM in London and spoke about the reconciliation between her and Katy Perry. She, and I love how carefully Taylor worded everything. She said, Katy and I have been on good terms. No, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna read it verbatim. I missed the word there. She said, Katie and I have really been on good terms for a while. She goes on to say, she sent me a really nice note and an olive branch, like an actual olive branch to my tour when it started, the Reputation Stadium tour a while ago. From that point on, we've been on good terms. Good terms. We saw each other at a party and walked up to each other and hugged it out and talked about things. Then we saw each other again and hung out at another party. You know, she and I have been fine for a while. We've been fine and really on good terms, but we didn't know if we were ever gonna really tell people about it. We wanted to make sure that that was solid between us before we ever made the public aware. Translation, they have no more bad blood, but they're not even friends. They are friendly and they are both using each other. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. They both win. <laughs> Simple as that. Unlike Lady Gaga and me, she would gain nothing out of reconciling with me other than maybe just clearing some karma and peace of mind, which I'm down for as well, but I'm not trying to be friends with her or hang out or anything like that. I just want to go to her concert. I never heard back from her as to whether or not I'm invited to go see her in Las Vegas. I think I might just have to go anyways. And if I get kicked out, then that's a good story, right? Ay, ay, ay. In other news, this... This was polarizing, I would say. And I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below and definitely let me know in the live stream chat 
which if you're not signed up for my YouTube notifications, I premiere all my videos and I live chat with you guys. It occurred to me while live chatting with you guys yesterday, I had this light bulb go off about the Spice Girls. And I had not thought of this. Victoria Beckham, you know, I understood all of her reasons for not taking part in the Spice Girls reunion. And I did not miss her from all the videos I saw. She would have not been happy there. She doesn't really add much. I mean, it would have been nice, but I respect and appreciate that she didn't do it. I was upset that she didn't even go and show up once to support the girls. She was in the UK. It's not like she was out of the country. It's not like it would have incredibly inconvenienced her to go to one of the shows. She, she could have also done it real incognito and been in one of the luxury suites and nobody would have even known until she, she or the girls posted about it on social media. Maybe she did go and it's been kept a secret, but I doubt it. If she was there, even if they hadn't posted photos, word would have gotten out. The UK press would have found out and spoken about it. I'm really disappointed by that. Let me know what you think. Speaking of the Beckhams, and I wanted to mention that because I really wanted to talk about this next story because it just makes me roll my eyes viciously and I'm sick of it. The UK media continues to write about David Beckham giving his, I believe, six-year-old daughter, Harper, kisses on the lips. And he posted a photo because he's clearly not bothered by it and he clearly does not care that folks think it's weird or this or that or the other. I don't think it's weird. I don't get the stories. You've already said that. You've written that story over and over again. Why are they still writing that story? Maybe because maybe because I'm even talking about it. Maybe because it, they know it's dumb and they just want a reaction out of people. <sighs> Speaking of dumb, hold on a second. I honestly had to scratch my ear so badly and I didn't want to do it on camera. <laughs> I am dumb. I own it. Speaking of dumb, the Keeping Up with the Kardashians show is finally getting to the Tristan Thompson, Jordan Woods, Kylie Jenner, Khloe Kardashian drama. And of course, they saved it for a two-part season finale. Not series finale. They're still around for at least a few more years. Yeah, that's basically my thoughts on it. This is so forever ago. Do we care? I'll reiterate what I said before. If Keeping Up With The Kardashians changed their filming to happen more in real time, not five, six months later, maybe people would care about the show more, but I just could not be bothered. <laughs> Speaking of Khloe Kardashian, her brother, Rob, continues to flirt publicly with Nati Natasha, the Dominican singer whom I love. I'll be talking about the Dominican Republic later. <gasps> Again. <clears throat> um, and of course, Khloe felt the need to chime in, which, you know what? I don't blame her because Rob is making it public because flirting on Twitter. Nati Natasha saw something that Rob posted about Dream and about Father's Day, and she responded saying, you're such a great dad, see you soon. And Rob was like, yeah, see you soon. And then Chloe jumped in and was like, who is this? Expressing her own um, reservations about this potential budding romance. So because it was done publicly on Twitter, I think, all right, fine, she can be playful with her brother and but I don't even know if she was being playful maybe she's just as concerned and is like who is this in other Khloe Kardashian news OJ Simpson felt the need to go to Twitter to let the world know that he is not 
Khloe Kardashian's father. OJ, as I told you all, just joined Twitter. And if he really wants to be a serious social media influencer, he needs a better phone or a better camera. The video he uploaded looked like a 10-year-old cell phone took it. He said, Bob Kardashian was like a brother to me. He was a great guy. He married Chris and they had a terrific time together when they were together. And unfortunately that ended, but never. And I want to stress never in any way, shape or form had I ever had any interest in Chris romantically or sexually. And I, not, and I never got any indication that she had any interest in me. So all of these stories are just bogus and bad and tasteless. Like he's an expert on bogus and bad and tasteless. Chloe, like all the girls, I'm very proud of, just like I know Bob would be if he was here. But the simple facts of the matter is she's not mine. I don't want to hear more from this guy. Speaking of the Car Jenners still, on Father's Day, if you missed this, Caitlyn Jenner shaded the F out of Tristan Thompson, and I was here for it. Caitlin took to social media to say, to all the dads in my life, happy Father's Day, starting with my father, a World War II veteran. Dad, Bert, Brandon, Kanye, Rob, Scott, and Travis, happy Father's Day. He noticeably did not mention Travis Scott. I mean, sorry, Tristan Thompson. He noticeably did not mention Tristan Thompson. Maybe this will be the beginning of his reconciliation with Chloe. And all the Kardashian girls, they were loving it, saying, I love it. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Caitlin. Blah, 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 blah. But Chloe didn't chime in. Chloe was one of the few ones that didn't comment on that post. Uh, speaking of Father's Day, on Father's Day, Bill Cosby felt the need for some wacky reason, to have his team put out a statement on his behalf on Twitter. Bill Cosby had this to say to America. Hey, 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 it's America's dad. I know it's late, but to all of the dads, it's an honor to be called a father. So let's make today a renewed oath to fulfilling our purpose, strengthening our families and communities. Hashtag happy Father's Day, hashtag renewed oath to our family. First and foremost, you are not America's father. Tom Hanks is America's father. <laughs> not, not really. Barack Obama is America's father. Oh, a squirrel. Barack Obama is America's father. You are not America's father. Secondly, poor Bill Cosby. They must be starving him in jail because he is so hungry for attention. It's the only possible reason I could think of before that tweet. In similar news, Janelle Evans, wah, wah, the teen mom star who is with the violent husband of hers posted a photo on Father's Day saying, too quiet on Instagram story. Well, it wouldn't be too quiet if you dumped that dude and then got your kids back. But no, you choose to remain with him. And I do feel so bad for those kids. There's, there's how many, three or four of them involved? At least three. This must not be easy for them. Uh, similarly, speaking of reality TV stars and Father's Day, Teresa Giudici's daughters, the Real Housewives of New Jersey stars, took to social media to pay tribute to their dad on Father's Day. Joe Giudici is still locked up ICE is detaining him while he fights a deportation back to Italy where he was born. But as I've said, oh God, that's an angry squirrel. As I've said before, <laughs> he did his time. He's not a violent criminal. I don't think that dude should be deported. Do you? In other wacky family, and other Oh, did I, what, what happened to that? Oh no, wait, what did I do with that one? Oh, here we go. 
All right, I almost skipped over it. In other wacky family news, according to the British media, and I have to specify that whenever I hear that, I don't know how much I believe or not. Because, well, this one I kind of believe. So I like to be very specific. According to the Sunday Times in the UK, that is a reputable outlet. It's not like whatever the express or the telegraph no the telegraph is reputable too i don't know it's not like some rag okay the sunday times said that prince philip which is the grandfather of prince harry told him not to marry Meghan markle he said and i quote one steps out with actresses one doesn't marry them and let me say something this man is 98 years old. He's 98. People of that era think differently. It's, he almost gets a pass for being so out of touch, right? <laughs> and also, I think he's informed by the family history. Wasn't Wallace Simpson also an actress? She's the woman that the former king of the UK abdicated the throne for. He's 98. How did that even get out? How did that even get some, like, how does that become public? That I wonder. Either Harry told William and then William blabbed, or Meghan told a friend and the friend blabbed. Like, I don't understand how something that private becomes news in a reputable outlet. Do you think that Prince Philip should get a pass? Let me know. All right, on to wacky, wacky, wacky news. I am so impressed with Elijah Daniel. Some of you know him from the videos that he made with Christine Sidelko. I talked about Christine recently saying that she is basically going through a lot. She expressed regret over not continuing her education and being an influencer full time. And she talked about having anxiety and depression. Uh, Elijah recently has been focusing more on music. And after he split with Christine, launched his personal solo YouTube channel, which for some reason never really took off. It didn't quite connect with the YouTube community. Maybe, maybe YouTube has it against him. Maybe they never promoted him because his content is very edgy. Well, throughout his career, Elijah Daniel has had quite the knack for coming up with stunts. He was once mayor of a town, I believe, if I remember. Was that him? He's done a bunch of wacky stunts that have gotten him a lot of publicity, which makes me think, I need to do some stunts. Two things. One, Elijah Daniel, if you're watching this, think of a stunt that I could do. And let's, let's put it out there. I can't do everything because I've got three kids. I have to take my kids into consideration. I can do a lot, but I'm not gonna do anything. I mean, I did, I did Benji on the Howard Stern Show, so that's a lot. <laughs> um, and secondly, let me just ask you, my Fram, what stunt could I do to grow either this YouTube channel, my personal YouTube channel, or the podcast? Put your thinking caps on and let me know in the comments section down below. No need to chime in on the live chat. I want you to really take your time and think of whatever really good stunt I could do. And maybe I'll do them. I'm down. <laughs> All right. He, Elijah Daniel, just bought a small town in Michigan called Hell, which just seems like such a stunt, right? The fact that there was even enough land that somebody owned that had a name that people lived on, I'm guessing, that allowed it to be a legal town or a legal piece of property that had a name legally in Michigan. And Elijah says that he bought this piece of property and he renamed it from hell to gay hell 
to protest Donald Trump's ban on pride flags. Smart. He just got himself a ton of press. I want a ton of press. I'm trying to think what I could do. I keep waiting for the Kardashians to do another nude photo so that I could recreate that. I did enjoy doing that last year. And then I stopped because my manager said I should, but I'm feeling like doing one. <laughs> uh, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Let me know your thoughts. In other wacky news, one of the Parkland high school shooting survivors, this guy named Kyle Kashev, is real sad because Harvard has rescinded his acceptance. Why? Because of previous racist comments that he made. <gasps> Poor little racist. Okay, no. Poor little previous racist. He is so upset by this because he claims that he's grown, which I can acknowledge, accept, and understand. Growth is awesome. However, as I am painfully aware, I to this day continue to pay for the mistakes of my past. And admittance to Harvard is not guaranteed once they've accepted you. They have every right to take back that invitation to join the upcoming freshman class. It's in the paperwork that you read and sign. This face, I don't think I've made that face in. That's the appropriate face for that story. But I want to hear what you think. Do you think that it was wrong of Harvard to take away this kid's invitation to join? Let me know. In other wacky news, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not even going to mention what he did. I'm not even gonna link to it in this video because I don't want this being demonetized in either YouTube or Facebook. But Alex Jones from InfoWars has done something, according to reports, so inexcusable and vile. I can't, I can't even come up with one possible reason why he would do that. If you can, let me know. And if you want to know what he did, the story is up on PerezHilton.com. And thank you to everybody that's been signing up for the newsletter. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter yet, please do. You can easily sign up at PerezNewsletter.com. That's PerezNewsletter.com. All right, in more wacky news and unfortunate and sad and troubling, an eighth American tourist, numero ocho, has died in the Dominican Republic in the last 12 months, we have found out. I'm really worried for the tourism industry there, as I've said before. But also, I don't know, there just seems to be something going on and what could be the possible scenario? The Minister of Tourism says that it was just an isolated incident and claims that like, millions of people have visited the Dominican Republic in the last few years and these deaths are nothing out of the ordinary. I don't know if I believe that. There's a new conspiracy theory going around though. A friend of mine, actually a fram of mine, one of the, one of the commenters on, um, on my website. If you don't leave comments on PerezHilton.com, I respond to the comments on there. I'm on there connecting with you guys as well as all over the place. What's his name? Intoxicated? Yeah, intoxicated with an eight, I believe. And he's a heterosexual guy, which I love. A heterosexual guy who reads my website and he's so old school. He is anti-streaming and only buys music. But I love that he does that. You know, whatever makes him happy. All right. He says that his sister goes to the Dominican Republic every year with her two sons. 
and quote, she's been hearing from people she knows who also travel there that this could be linked to pesticides flowing through the ventilation system at the hotels. That's an interesting theory. And if you're reading this intoxicated, hello, I love shouting out all of my fram. And hello to Honeymar, one of my live chatters from Puerto Rico. Hola, Honeymar. I love you as well. I love you all. I'm getting to know so many of you through so many ways. I love it. And hello to Darian. Darian. <coughs> <coughs> Darian, I hope you watch this. Mi amiga Darian from New Jersey. I see you on Facebook and Instagram. I love you guys. Okay, still talking about the Dominican Republic, 47 members. 47 members. About half of those from this fan club. There's a big fan club. There's a big Jimmy Buffett fan club in Oklahoma. And they all went to the Dominican Republic together. Are they all a bunch of stoners? I don't know. Um, and 47 members of their group got sick during their trip to the Hotel Rio Palace Macau in the Dominican Republic. And not just sick, they got violently ill. The travel agent, Dana Flores, says... I lost 14 pounds during that time and was really sick. I can't even explain how sick. She said, most people initially thought it was food poisoning. It was basically, it was crippling diarrhea. That's not funny, but it is kind of funny. Ah. Ay, ay, ay. Speaking of making you sick, Jojo Siwa, the... Former Dance Moms star turned social media superstar took to her YouTube to apologize to all of her fans for a potentially toxic <laughs> asbestos being found in her Claire's makeup kit. She released a short but effective video saying, recently it's been brought to my attention that there's been a problem with one of my products in clear stores, with one of the JoJo makeup products. I just want to let everybody know that no matter what, safety is myself and Nickelodeon's number one priority in everything, in every JoJo product and in everything out there. We are working really, really hard to make sure that this product is recalled and off of all the shelves and also that anyone who has this product can get a refund no matter what. If it's used or it's unused, you can get a full refund. Well, cool. Very nice of her and the team at Nickelodeon and Claire's and this girl's just 16. I don't think she even needed to make that video, but I applaud and respect her and her team for having made it. I do not care for or appreciate the statement that Nicholas Sparks made apologizing for the insensitive comments he made about the LGBT community and the school that he founded, but I don't care enough about Nicholas Sparks to go into this. If any of you are Nicholas Sparks fans, I will have the link down below so that you can get caught up on the controversy and read his apology. I need to send all of the positive vibes to Anderson Cooper, his beloved mother, the iconic Gloria Vanderbilt, has passed away. She was 95 years old. And if you don't know anything about her, this woman lived quite the life. Yes, she was born into wealth, but her family basically abandoned her. She had a really difficult upbringing and a difficult life. One of her sons committed suicide, Anderson's brother. And that, I can only imagine, scars a parent forever. You may never be able to be, recover or be whole or heal from that. So, what a life. And 95... And Anderson Cooper is just a gem of a human being. So all of the light there. Ooh, let's keep it lighter. You guys, I watch so many Trisha Paytas videos that yesterday before bedtime, as I was checking YouTube, well, basically checking my channels, leaving, looking at comments, responding, I saw in the related section a video from Trisha's mother. Yes, Trisha Paytas' mom. The headline was, 
picnic lunch and the World Cup and Dominican Republic deaths. Even Trisha's mom is talking about the Dominican Republic deaths. I tried watching it. She seems like a lovely lady, but she's missing that je ne sais quoi that Trisha has. And I could only watch a couple of minutes, maybe three minutes max. Is she really, she was enjoying her alcohol and eating and was on the floor doing it all like mother, like daughter. If you're bored and want to watch a little bit of it, check it out. Search for her after I'm done with my video. On to lighter and much brighter news. One of my all time favorites, Shania Twain, announced a new Vegas residency. Yay! I can't wait to see Shania in Vegas. I've seen her in concert many times and she puts on a great show. And finally, I need to congratulate my doppelganger. If any of you watched the Bachelorette or Bachelor in Paradise, you may remember Chris Randone. He looks so much like me. He just said, I do, with somebody he met during Bachelor in Paradise, Crystal Nielsen. So it seems like some of those people really are wanting to, or maybe not. They all just want to be on TV. And if they find love along the way, then great. But let's not get it twisted. They're all doing those shows just to be on television. I would do it. I still want to do a gay bachelor show. Or any show, really. <laughs> yes, water. I'm trying to drink less coffee because my anxiety has been... But I love you and... Oh no, I love you and I literally am giving you a piece of this flower. Mwah, mwah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, leave a comment, follow, subscribe, share, uh, subscribe to my newsletter, PerezNewsletter.com, get cameos, tell your friends, continue to be amazing. Mwah, mwah. Meow, 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 meow.